Hi everybody have a wonderful day. In this video talk about Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K. Hey guys just one minute. InfoRx helpful to your tech life. Please subscribe our channel. Let's go to the topics. Recently, the new Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K arrived at the scene headquarters. Reason enough to run it through our standard lab test procedures. Curious to hear how this new, full-frame camera from Blackmagic Design fares. I have been a Blackmagic Design fan since the introduction of the original Pocket Cinema Camera in 2013, and I still use it from time to time if I am after a certain look. For instance, using it with C-mount lenses can give me a nice vintage, very organic Super 16 look. But this is another story. I then added the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K to my arsenal, which is one of my two go-to cameras. The other one is the Panasonic Lumix S1. This brings me directly to the new Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K BMCC 6K, which now uses the same L-mount as my Panasonic Lumix S1 and also comes with a full-frame sensor. Please have a look at the article looking into the specs by my colleague Jacob here, and a first look by my colleague Francesco here. So, I was really interested to see what this first full-frame camera from Blackmagic Design brings to the table. BMCC 6K, rolling shutter. Using our 300Hz strobe light, which generates the sequence of black and white bars, we get 18.7 milliseconds, less is better, for 6K DCI, 17, 9. This is not the best result for 2023. We have a lot of other full-frame consumer cameras that are better. The Nikon Z9, 8K 14.5 milliseconds, the Canon EOS R5C, 8K 15.5 milliseconds, and the Sony A1, 8K 16.6 milliseconds, just to name a few. And, of course, the leader of the pack, the Sony A7S III with 8.7 milliseconds in 16, 9 4K. Full-frame cameras that perform worse in the rolling shutter department are the Panasonic Lumix S-series cameras which are all around 22 milliseconds. In 3, 2 open gate mode, we get 25 milliseconds, and in 4K DCI crop mode, we get 15 milliseconds for the new BMCC 6K. BMCC 6K, dynamic range. The BMCC 6K has again a dual native ISO sensor, with ISO 403200 as the native ISO. In Blackmagic RAW though, which is the only codec now available, as PRAW's HQ is gone, ISO can be set in post. These two ISOs, however, represent a good balance between highlights and shadows. Let's have a look at the waveform of the 6K open gate, RAW 3, 1 at ISO 400, Color Science General 5. A solid 12 stops above the noise floor can be identified, with a 13th and even a 14th stop visible. IMATEST calculates 11.6 stops at a signal to noise ratio, SNR, of 2, and 12.9 stops at SNR equals 1 for ISO 400. These are almost exactly the same results that we measured for the BMPCC 6K and BMPCC 6K Pro, they actually showed 0.2 stops better results at SNR equals 2. Also, the noise levels look very similar. Also for ISO 3200, about 12 stops are visible above the noise floor. However, the second native ISO is really very noisy. Let's see what IMATEST calculates. IMATEST calculates 10.2 stops at SNR equals 2 and 11.5 stops at SNR equals 1. This is similar to what we measured for the BMPCC 6K and 6K Pro lab test here. Hence, you lose about 1.5 stops when switching to the higher ISO circuit, which is not exactly what I would expect from a dual native ISO sensor. All the other cameras that we tested so far typically showed less than half a stop difference in dynamic range when switching to the second native ISO value. In addition, the normalized pixel noise reaches values of around 6 in the red channel, see the lowest of the three diagrams above, which is way higher than for the BMPCC 6K and 6K Pro at ISO 3200. I did some quick tests comparing the two cameras at home and actually found the noise nastier, and much more difficult to remove with the new full-frame BMCC 6K. Quite surprising to be honest. In the crop 4K modes, the same exact dynamic range results for the two ISOs are obtained, which is to be expected, also for the higher frame rates that are possible in those modes. BMCC 6K, Latitude. Latitude is the capability of a camera to retain details and colors when over or underexposed and pushed back to base exposure. 
Some time ago, we chose an arbitrary value of around 60% luma value in the waveform for our subject's forehead as the base exposure in our standard studio scene. This seamed base exposure should help our readers get a reference point for all the cameras tested, regardless of how they distribute the code values in which log mode is used. As usual, we overexpose until the red channel is at the cusp of clipping on the forehead of our subject, my dear colleague Johnny in this case, and then we push it back to base exposure in post. Here, typically some patches of the color checker on the left are clipped. Those can be brought back by using the Highlight Recovery option in the Raw Camera tab of DaVinci Resolve 18.6.4 that we used here. However, we only test with Highlight Recovery turned off as color accuracy suffers massively with reconstructed color channels, as we wrote in many earlier articles, but it is a nice option to have to save parts of the image if they are partially clipped. For Blackmagic Color Science Generation 5, due to the code value distribution at ISO 400, that gives three stops of overexposure possibility. From here forward, we close the iris of our Zeiss Compact Prime 85mm T1.5, which we always use for full-frame cameras, to T2, T2.8, and so on until T8, and then we also double the shutter speed. These images are also normalized back to base exposure in post. Now, let's directly move to five stops of underexposure from base brought back. Here, quite suddenly, noise starts to kick in, which was almost absent even for the four stops under image that was brought back. We are at eight stops of exposure latitude, three over to five under. That is almost the standard now for consumer full-frame cameras like the Sony A1, the Panasonic Lumix SH1, S1, and S5, not the S5II as this one only had seven stops of latitude. Noise reduction helps to clean up the image, but a green tint stays in the shadows. It is already at the cusp of being usable, but I will still count it as a valid result. Quite massive temporal and spatial noise reduction is needed. Now, let's move to six stops under exposure. Now, the noise becomes massive, and horizontal stripes also start to appear. Plus, the nasty green tint in the shadows is much more pronounced. The horizontal stripes can be identified more easily when using noise reduction. Hence, this is a clear, game over, which leads us to the conclusion that 8 stops of exposure latitude are possible with the new BMC C6K. Compared to recent consumer cameras, this is one stop better than the Canon EOS R5C or Panasonic Lumix S5II, and it is similar to the Sony A1, Panasonic Lumix S1H, S1 or S5, and also Nikon Z9 as well as Canon EOS R3. This result is a tad disappointing, as I did expect the 12-bit RAW codec to have more potential to pull up shadow stops compared to the H264 or H265 codecs that are typically available for consumer cameras. The leaders of the pack in the full-frame segment are the Red V Raptor with 9 stops and the ARRI Alexa Mini LF with 10 stops of exposure latitude. Our benchmark is the Super 35 ARRI Alexa 35 with 12 stops. Summary the new Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K shows a solid performance in the lab test. In the rolling shutter department, it falls behind compared to most recent consumer full-frame cameras, whereas in the dynamic range department, it is on a similar level, at least for the lower native ISO. The higher native ISO is sort of a problem child, I would stay away from it if possible. Latitude is also in the middle ground, nothing special, but better than some recent cameras like the Panasonic Lumix S5II or the Canon EOS R5C. As a BMPC C6K or 6K Pro user, it is simple, lab test results for the new full-frame BMC C6K are sort of copy and paste from the APS-C sized BMPC C6K and 6K Pro. Hence, a bigger sensor, but everything else is similar. Have you shot with the BMC C6K yet? What is your experience? Let us know in the comments below.